Hi, this is a video about financial support for coronavirus in the UK. This is going to be rough. I'm not going to be properly framed and well lit and I'll probably put this out in black and white. I'm going to be reading off my phone for notes because there is so much information that we've had to absorb about how this is all going to affect people and what people need to do about it to claim some money or to help with their cash flow or to keep their businesses afloat or to keep themselves afloat. There's a lot to go through. So this first video is going to be a bunch of warnings and disclaimers and then a contents page. Basically, it's going to tell you what I will be talking about in the rest of these videos that I'm hopefully going to get all recorded and posted today because this is urgent for some people. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Ben, I'm a chartered accountant. I've probably had this emailed around by a friend who's a client. First disclaimer is that this information is going to go out of date fast. This is going to, this is rough information. This is what they've said so far, interpreted the, as best we can because they don't know what they're doing. They, sorry, the government, people making up these rules, they don't really know what they're doing. They haven't planned ahead for this. They're just making it up and waiting till people say, but what about? And then making a decision about that, which means people will constantly be saying, but what about? And they'll constantly be making judgment calls about how to interpret that. So all of this information could become out of date quite quickly, but we still need to try at least to understand where we are financially at the moment. First thing off my notes is that I need to ask for your help because this is based on questions clients have asked me but, and I had questions of my own, you may have more questions. Ask them in the comments underneath because either I'll know the answer. I mean, if anyone does, I should. I've been through all the damn paperwork that exists so far. But if I don't know the answer, then at least you'll know that no one yet knows the answer and we can maybe hassle to get an answer from HMRC or the government or whoever's administering this. You'll at least know that you haven't missed something. So ask questions down in the comments. Uh, second thing is to give this video, send a link to anyone you know who might need it. And because this affects people with salary, people who are self-employed and people who have no money at all and people who are running businesses and people who are running companies and people who have businesses working out of properties and some of some things to do with credit, some things, uh, tax credits and some things to do with annual leave. <sighs> Probably everyone you know might be affected by this and uh, they might not tell you that they're struggling. You might not know that the person with the nice car is freaking out at home right now under quarantine. So maybe just email it around, just stick it on your socials. People need this kind of information. Thank you very much. Okay, scam warning. There's lots of money being thrown around by the government, which means there are going to be lots of scam artists stuck at home under quarantine, coming up with ways to try and take that money from you. Be careful. It's going to be harder than usual because there will be what seem like very good offers being thrown at you sometimes for free money for not working or for free money for not running your business. And that means people will put fake offers out. And you won't be able to check if they're real because if you try and call the, oh, this comes from the local authority, you try and call them, they're all working from home or not working at all and they can't answer your phones and if they could, they're going to be super busy because everyone else is phoning them as well. So you're not even going to be able to check very easily. Be super suspicious as ever of anyone asking for your details. Be very suspicious. Next thing to say is about the ethics of this. Normally ethics in tax is pretty easy. Don't dodge tax. We play by the rules we're given. Try not to overpay tax by the rules you're given. If you disagree with the rules, argue for a change in the rules and vote for people who will change the rules, but play by the rules you're given and don't dodge tax. This is a weird situation. These are emergency measures. They are broad strokes. There are huge gaps in the safety nets they're putting up. The purpose is to throw money at businesses to keep the whole economy from tanking too badly. And individuals who would end up homeless. And so the intention Normally, the tax man is to take as much as possible and give away as little as possible. But right now, that's not their intention. Their intention is to give money to people who deserve it. And deserve is a pretty broad and loose term, which means if you are falling between the holes of this, these safety nets that are rapidly being set up, 
by people who had no plan for this, idiots, then consider if the money should have gone to you when you're giving answers to whatever forms you have to fill in, if you're resubmitting a 2018-19 self-assessment because you were self-employed and kind of still are self if that kind of thing happens. It's not as simple as don't dodge tax. It's was this money supposed to come to you? Was this money supposed to come to you? And if it was supposed to come to you, maybe answer the forms in such a way that it gets to you. They want the economy to stay afloat. They want to throw your, our collective money at people to keep businesses afloat, to keep people in their houses and fed. So the ethics is a little bit more, they probably want you to have the money. Now that doesn't mean be dodgy. That doesn't mean take 10 grand just because you can lie on a form and take 10 grand. Don't do that. But if the truth of your situation is that yes, you were working and now you can't and you've lost a lot of money and you're going to lose a huge amount of money, then they want you to have money. That's what this is for. So slightly weird ethics. And final warning is a fairness warning. This isn't going to be fair. Um, don't come here looking for justice. I don't have any for you. There are going to be people who do not need money, who are going to receive free money, whose businesses are fine and yet they're just going to get some cash thrown at them and they've got loads of money already and it's going to be wonderful. There are going to be people who thoroughly deserve money and are going to be very hard up and who are going to fall through the cracks and no amount of massaging of the figures is going to change the fact that they're not going to get the money they should get. The system isn't going to be fair, partly because it's so rushed. It shouldn't have been so rushed. It could have been planned ahead. This was entirely predictable, but it's going to be rushed. It's going to be unfair. And it's going to be unfair because the people putting it in place don't care about you. They're doing this to save the economy as a whole because they have share portfolios and the people they work for own vast sections of the economy and they don't want the economy as a whole to be any worse than it has to. Individually, they don't care about your business. They don't care about your gran getting sick. They don't care about any of that stuff. They only care about them and their friends, millionaires with shares and the people they work for, billionaires with more shares. So I'm sorry, but don't come here looking for fairness. If you get screwed over by this, kick up a stink. If you make enough of a stink that they think they might get kicked out, get kicked out of the next election, which is a long way away, then they might change the rules. That's what happened with self-employment. They didn't have a plan for self-employed people. The newspapers went, what about self-employed people? They went, oh God, there's millions of self-employed people. We should do something about self-employed people or we'll get in trouble. Not because they care about taxis and plumbers and everyone else who's self-employed. They don't. But they suddenly realized they would get in trouble and lose their power if they didn't do something about self-employed people. Give us a couple of days, we'll come up with a plan. So that's who you're dealing with. They're not here to help you. But you might be able to get some money from them. <laughs> okay, contents. This is the contents bit for the videos that are coming up. Hopefully, if I can get this posted and then keep plowing through more videos. This is just everything I've tried to absorb uh, working over the weekend to try and work out what you can claim and what all the circumstances are around all this stuff. First section is going to be businesses occupying property. So that's people who pay rates or would pay rates if they weren't too small. There's going to be rates, holidays, and there's going to be grants. And the grants are simple, 10 grand for small businesses, 25 grand for certain businesses, a lot of money with almost no questions asked. That's going to be really useful for some people. Employers and employees will be the next section. The big one is coronavirus job retention scheme, the CJRS. That's the one with the 80% of salary through your employer. That's going to be huge for a lot of people. So I'll explain a bunch of the known details about that. Next is going to be statutory sick pay relief. That's smaller, but still useful for both employers and employees and for people running their own companies. You may be an employee of the company you own. So both sides of that. And the smallest thing is going to be holiday rollover, a change in the rules about being able to roll forward your annual leave if you couldn't take it because of coronavirus. That's a tiny thing, but it's worth mentioning. Next section will be self-employed people. 
if you run your own company, you're a director of your own company, you're not self-employed, don't get this mixed up. Self-employed people, properly self-employed people, there's going to be a scheme for them. They're calling it Self-Employment Income Support Scheme, SISS. And there's plenty to say about it. It's another 80% scheme. But there's a lot of complications and some bad news and some good news. The next section is I've put everything together that I call business cash flow. This is all the stuff that isn't a grant. This isn't have money for not working or have money for no longer being self-employed or have money for running a property business, not a property business, a business that occupies property, you know, rate, rate payers. This isn't have free money. This is ways to sort out your cash flow temporarily to hold on to money longer or to get some money in temporarily that you then have to give back. So things like income tax deferral, that affects almost everybody who has an income tax bill. VAT deferral, if you're VAT registered. HMRC's time to pay scheme, that's if you really can't pay your taxes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about debtors. Commercial rent, uh, changing the rules around commercial rent that might help you. Um, coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, bills or C-bills. The business interruption loan scheme is government backed loans from banks. So you get the loan through a bank, but it's government backed. So the bank has low risk, so they can afford to give out loans with, you know, 80% of the backing from the government. Um, that's when things are getting desperate, when the business will close unless you get cash, but it will be viable in the future, then you can get a loan from the bank via the government, from the government via the bank. Um, and finally, if things go really badly, changes to insolvency. There will be a few people this will help. <clears throat> Most people will either not go insolvent, the company won't fail, or it will fail completely. And no change in the insolvency rules is going to save you. But there will be a few people who are right between smashing into the ground and not, where the changes in the rules will help you. Where, I'll talk about them properly later, but changes to insolvency rules that will allow you to keep trading a bit longer than you otherwise would have when the company or business is insolvent. Next section uh, is grants and support that aren't to do with work or business. So things like tax credits, universal credit, stuff to do with personal rental payments and mortgage payments, a few changes to rules around that. Um, and then a list of other things I'll mention. None of that is my area of expertise because I'm an accountant working with businesses, but I can at least give you the key words and the terms such as universal credit that you should be going and having a look at if that's what you need. You can go find people who are much better, who deal with this stuff all the time and can explain to you as well as possible online how to claim all of this stuff. Um, citizens advice are great. I think the low income tax reform group have good web pages about this kind of stuff too. Uh, this might be a shock to you. A lot of people never considered claiming tax credits or universal credit, would never dream of it. But again, government wants to keep the economy afloat. They want to give you money. This might be the time to do what you never thought you'd have to do and claim for some, for some uh, social security, for some safety net support personally. And finally, a, a miscellaneous section for everything. It doesn't fit somewhere else. Just a few bits and pieces that don't really fit into any of those previous headings. I'll make a last little video about those random bits. Last thing for this video is urgent stuff. There are some bits throughout all of this information that you should do soon. And if you have to watch all of the videos very carefully to find the few things that have to be done soon, you might miss a couple of them. So I'm just gonna list the ones I've noticed that require quick action. Write them down somewhere, don't lose them, stick them right on your monitor so that once you've worked all your way through all the bits of the videos that are relevant to you, you can go and do those things first. The first thing is that if you've been made redundant, go and see if you can get rehired and furloughed. A lot of companies might not realize this in the panic that if you've made, if you've fired someone since, uh, I think the date is the 28th of February. If someone was made redundant after the 28th of February, they can be unredundanted and then furloughed. That's not breaking the rules. The government wants you to do that. It's a job retention scheme. They want people to stay in jobs and the government will pay the wage or at least they'll pay 80% of the wage. And your employer can only pay you 80% if you agree to it. If the choice is having nothing or being put back on the books to not work for 80% of your wage, that's a win for you. 
and your employer won't end up paying anything. They've got to administer it and temporarily pay, but they'll get the money back from the government. So go and speak to your old employer. You might not think it, but it's free to them. They might, if they're not complete shits, put you back on the books and give you 80% of your wage for being furloughed. So go do that soon, right now, if you've been made redundant. Next thing <clears throat> is cancelling your VAT direct debit. Particularly if, like me, your VAT quarter ended at the end of February, but pretty much at all, you're going to be able to miss one VAT payment. Maybe more if this carries on for longer, but at least one VAT payment and then pay it at the end of March 2021. So if that VAT is enough that it makes a difference to the cash flow of your business, then you want to not pay that VAT payment. But if you have a direct debit set up, like most people do, they can't stop themselves from taking the VAT payment. So you need to cancel the direct debit. They want you to go and cancel your direct debit for your VAT. Listen to all the whole section about VAT and direct debits when that comes up, but for now, go cancel that. No, sorry. Don't cancel it yet. Go listen to the section first and then cancel the direct debit. It'll be coming out in the middle of April, so you've got days for it, but not many days. <clears throat> Next one's kind of complicated. It's about directors who pay themselves a small salary and then take the rest as dividends. Things aren't going to be good for people doing that, particularly, but there is a possibility, not yet confirmed, not yet denied, a possibility that the way a furloughed director's salary will work can be based on the last 12 months. It will be based on the last 12 months of salary, but whether that means the last 12 calendar months or the actual like, previous 12 months. So if you were furloughed in mid-April, does it include early April payments in your previous 12 months? Because if it does, and we're coming to the end of the tax year, you can pay yourself your small salary now, or possibly even top that salary up a little bit now. So your March salary could be £8,632, which is the tax efficient amount for directors. Or it could, you could top it up to £12,500, which is the self-assessment personal allowance threshold. But also, as soon as the 6th of April comes around, you could do your next year's salary as well. And then you will have, on the 6th of April, your previous 12 months will include two of those annual salaries, two lots of 8,632 or whatever the figures will be. So sort of 19, 20,000 pounds, which may be a much more accurate figure for you to be furloughed on. It's complicated, we'll go into more detail, but put that on your list of things to do urgently, possibly sort out your salary for this tax year and then as soon as the 6th of April comes around to sort out your salary for the next tax year before you have to get furloughed. Submitting a late 2018-19 self-assessment. They've extended the deadline. The deadline was 31st of January for submitting your self-assessment for 2018-19. They've issued another four-week extension from, well, it's more than four weeks, but from when they said it, four weeks, which is up to the 23rd of April. If you need to submit a self-assessment for 2018-19, go do one. You've got until the 23rd of April. If you want to amend a self-assessment for 2018-19, technically you've got until the 31st of January next year, but if I would do it by the 23rd of April, because clearly that's the date where they're gonna cut things off and use it as the basis for whatever calculations they're doing. So either amending or submitting for the first time your self-assessment for 2018-19, go do it. Their website's gonna be full and crashing, but you've gotta go get it done before the 23rd of April. If you need universal credit, go apply for it. There's a five week wait, like built into the system, at least a five week wait for universal credit if everything's working smoothly and everyone's applying for it right now. So it's not working smoothly. Oh, and all the people who administer it aren't around. So it's not working smoothly. Go apply now. There's a huge lag before you get the money. Oh, and yeah, commercial rent. We'll come to commercial rent, but if you pay commercial rent and you need that cash, go cancel any direct debits or standing orders that pay your commercial rent because you're going to want to, even if you are going to pay it, even if paying it is the right thing to do, 
And this is only cash flow, you have to pay it eventually. But even if paying it is the right thing to do, you'll want that to be an active choice you make. Don't just let the money walk out the door without you signing off on it. Cancel any direct debits and standing orders and then manually send that money if that's what you want to do. Because we'll talk about commercial rents and the rules that are changing around that. Okay, I think that's all the urgent things. That's a whole content section. I know it's kind of stuck in the middle after the warnings and before the urgent stuff, but the content section to tell you what you're going to need to pay attention to in the coming videos. And I will try and get this uploaded as fast as possible and send a link around so that I can then record the rest, the actual detailed information about all of this stuff and get all of that out to you. Thanks very much.